Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab, and there were millions of PlayStation games. But what was the first one ever? Was it this? No, because that's a PlayStation 5 game, and even the biggest mongrels in the gaming community know that the PS1 is older than the PS5. As it was a PS1 game that was the first one, was it this? No, because that's a European PlayStation 1 game, and back in the day, everyone outside of Japan used to get shafted. Not only did games come out first in Anime Land, but they had sensible cases, which didn't fall apart the moment you looked at them. They also had far better box art in Japan, although I can't complain too much as it could be worse. I could have been American and had to deal with the utter travesties they got stuck with. Seriously, what is going on in Mega Man's face here? So anyway, we know the first ever PlayStation game is obviously going to be on the PS1 and it's going to be Japanese. So we need to turn our attention now to the boxes themselves, because if you look at a PlayStation game, you'll spot the Sony serial number on the spine. The lower the number, the earlier it was licensed by Sony. On day one of the PlayStation 1's Japanese launch, there were eight games available to buy on launch day. I'm not going to go into detail about all of them, because most of them are shit. A4 Evolution? Shit. Crime Crackers? Great cover? Shit game. Mahjong Station Mazing? Shit. Mahjong Goku Tenji Key? Shit, and did they really need two Mahjong games on launch day? Itsu Oyako? Pretty good actually. Parodia Star? Absolutely fantastic. Ridge Racer? Words cannot describe how mind-blowing it was to see this on a home console in 1994. Finally, Tama. I don't actually mind this one, even though it is a bit janky. Out of all these, one game has the serial number 00001, and thankfully it's Ridge Racer, because if it had been Mahjong Station Mazing, I'd have sooner thrown myself off a cliff than make this video. But because it is Ridge Racer, I now have an excuse to talk and play about one of my favourite PlayStation 1 games of all time. So let's do an in-depth look at the first ever PlayStation game, because that's the point of the video. Video, and it's definitely not some wafer thin excuse I found just to make some Ridge Racer content. Ridge Racer was originally an arcade game that came out in October 1993 in Japan. It was created by Namco to try and one-up Sega who had released Virtua Racing, the world's first proper 3D racing game the year before in 1992. And yes, first proper. 3D racing game because no one looked at hard driving or winning run and said yes this is how all games should be made by now. Anyway so yeah Ridge Racer on the PlayStation is a home port of Ridge Racer the arcade game but saying that the PlayStation port also takes a few ideas from Ridge Racer 2 although it's worth noting that Ridge Racer 2 isn't really a proper sequel it's more like an upgrade to the first game but we'll talk about this more in a bit. Back in 1994 there was the general idea that the PlayStation game was almost the same graphical quality as the arcade game, although people in the mid 90s really didn't have an easy way to put the two versions side by side. But using the unimaginable, almost witchcraft like technology of the future, we can clearly see that the PS1 game is actually more of a graphical downgrade than we first thought at the time. It doesn't matter though, because Ridge Racer on the PS1 is still just as fun as finding girls allowed in your bathtub. And we'll slide into all the exciting gameplay details in a minute, but first, let's zoom right out and start examining the game from the beginning. Looking at the Japanese game case, it says it was created by Namcot, and no, that's not a spelling mistake made by some pissed up Japanese graphic designer, it was actually the name of Namco's subsidiary that handled home console game publishing in Japan. And you'll find it across most 80s and 90s Japanese Namco home console releases. But there's something else weird going on with the cover, it's the main red racing car. Now on the Japanese cover, it's a render of the car found in the arcade version. Notice it says Rave War, and if you don't know what Rave War was, it was the working title for Tekken while it was still in development. Then once the game hit American shores, the words Rave War were scrubbed off the car in the box art. Then once the game had meandered its way over to Europe, the blank space from the American car had been filled with the game name Starblade, and they touched up the texture work on the wheel so it didn't look like crap. 
If you were wondering if there was any differences between the regions in the actual game, there are only three really. On the title screen, the Japanese one said Namco, while the Western versions say Namco, and the track names are slightly different. The Japanese ones can be translated to Beginner, Intermediate and Advanced, while the Western names say Beginner, Mid-Level and High-Level. The third change is only in the European version. For some reason, the European version gives the player more time. So the Japanese and American versions give you 60 seconds when you begin the race, but the EU version gives you 72 seconds. The only reason I can think is that the EU version of the game only runs at 50 hertz, where the other regions run at 60 hertz. This is one of the reasons why I don't see why retro collectors in Europe try to collect EU versions of games, when it's a piece of piss these days to play import games. Import retro games run faster and EU games are objectively worse but as with most retro game collectors this wouldn't bother them because they're never going to play them they just want them as background for when they film their shitty youtube videos but i'll save that rant for another video anyway the first thing you're greeted with when you slap that disc into the playstation is a quick screen from the arcade game galaga this serves as both a fun way to hide a loading screen and if you're as skilled as me you can even unlock a load of the game's other cars if you clear out the screen before the game loads. Once the game begins, you're given less options than a menu in a Zimbabwe restaurant. All you can do is pick a course, a music track, a car, and look at the leaderboard. If you do look at the leaderboard, it's worth noting that as this is the first ever PlayStation game, the system's development name is still used. Look here, this spells out Ridge Racer PSX Namco. As far as picking a car goes, if you're shit at Galaga, then you'll only have access to the first four cars. But if you're not some sort of gaming wannabe poser and actually play the games you buy instead of just standing in front of them, then you'll get these other cars, which are named after older Namco games like Mappy and Xavius. Then you've got the course selection, which is also a bit slim pickings. Beginner, which is this track. Intermediate, which is the same track, but now with a higher top speed and an extra lap. Advanced, which is the same as intermediate but with an extra bit glued to the side and finally time trial which is the advanced course but there's only one other car on the track and he's really hard also in time trial mode you have the chance to input your name into the leaderboard so what we are saying here is that ridge racer the premier blockbuster launch title for the playstation one has just one course to race on so before we take a look at the one singular track namco graced us with let's turn our eyes and ears over to the final option offered to us and that's which song we'd like to race to. We get a set of proper 90s arcade bangers here, but even amongst these quality tunes, some stand well above the others. And the ones that do are...
So coming back to the core selection, just how does a game get away with having just one single track while at the same time get held in such high regard? Three reasons make up the answer to this. The first reason is the track layout. The beginner and intermediate layouts have many long straights to build up speed and offer a few different corners of various difficulties. Some corners are easy enough even for novice drivers to get around at speed, while three corners will take several attempts to learn the correct way to drift around at high speed. Then the advanced and time trial layout adds an extra section through a construction area with quite a few tricky turns that will take experienced players much longer to master. The next reason Ridge Racer gets away with just one track is the level of variety in the scenery that is packed into just one level. You'll start by racing on a city highway surrounded by skyscrapers before zooming through a tunnel and ending up flying around a bridge on a mountain ridge. A couple of turns later, you're now at a seaside area, passing by a beach and heading towards a forest area. This brings you to yet another tunnel which leads you back once again to the city highway you started. This variety keeps the course interesting over and over again. The third prong in this triple attack is how Ridge Racer on the PlayStation was compared to what was on the Sega Saturn. In Japan, both machines launched in winter 1994 and in the West in summer 95. The Japanese comparison was a landslide in favour of Ridge Racer because all the Sega Saturn had to offer racing fans in its launch window was shitty old Gale Racer, which is an arcade port of what we know as Radmobile. You put these games up against each other and it's not even a fight, it's a one-way beatdown. In the West, Sega managed to get Daytona USA out for the Saturn's launch, but it was a shit arcade conversion and really made the console look weak next to the PlayStation. It didn't matter that Daytona had more courses, more cars in each race, and you could even play as a fucking horse. Ridge Racer just looked better and far closer to its arcade counterpart than Daytona USA did. Now, Ridge Racer on the PS1 does appear to be a straight conversion of its arcade counterpart. However, there are a few changes made that are actually plucked straight out of the arcade upgrade called Ridge Racer 2. The first one is this giant screen that you speed past as you race into the game's first tunnel. In the arcade, it just has a lap counter and a lap time on it, but on the PS1, it's the same as it is in Ridge Racer 2, as it shows a scene from Gallagher. Maybe this inspired the loading screen mini game. The next change is to the course side billboards. In the arcade, they have totally fictional business names on, which is kind of boring. Whereas the PS1 and arcade version of Ridge Racer 2 all contain adverts for other Namco games, which is more in keeping in the style of the game. Another change is when you're on the starting line waiting to begin the race. In the arcade game, there's an overhead track sign that gives you the countdown. In both Ridge Racer 2 and the PS1 game, there's a pop-up box which gives you this countdown. The next change is exclusive to the PS1 version, and that's this large building. In the daytime, it just looks as normal, but at night, the lights make a smiley face appear. This doesn't happen at all in the arcade. But wait, there's more! Also, obviously, unlike the arcade version, the PS1 has different cars for you to choose from, but by far, the biggest new addition appears if you manage to gain first place on all four races, and that's the secret so-called extra courses. And if you want to see the winner's reef on one of these bad boys, well, strap on your big boy pants and buckle up, because this is where the real game starts. After you do finish the four OG tracks in first position, you'll get the game's normal ending and see the staff list in the credit roll and at the end you'll be instructed to try the extra mode. So at first glance the four extra courses just appear to be mirror mode versions of the four original tracks but it's much more than that. The track isn't actually mirrored it's the same track but now you're racing around it in the other direction so what was previously downhill turns now become completely blind uphill corners with all the extra fun of the incoming corner signposts now being completely obscured. On top of that the opponent cars have increased difficulty especially the car that you need to overtake to gain first place then the cherry on top of this hard as nails cake is that all the time extension checkpoints throughout the lap have been removed and you only earn bonus time upon finishing a lap the amount of time that is given is tighter than a nun snatch and you only have enough time to complete the lap as so long as you make no mistakes 
That's right, even on a perfect run without hitting any cars, walls or performing any major drifts, I finished the beginner course with only four seconds left to spare. A single mistake on an extra course will most likely result in you not being able to pass the finishing line, let alone get first place. These tracks are fucking brutal and anything other than a flawless race is a failure. Should you subject yourself to the torture of gaining first place on each of these extra courses, you'll be awarded with this, the Devil's Car number 13. Its stats are off the charts, and once you've got it, you can say that you've completed Ridge Racer, much in the same way that this video is now complete. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the first ever PlayStation game. Abba. Ridge, Ridge Racer! Racer. Ninja Racer!